Hello and welcome back to this course 1106. Uh, in this video, uh, I will cover section 1.2, which is about two classical inequalities, Cauchy Schwarz and Minkowski. If you already know these inequalities uh, and you prove them, then you can skip this video and move to the next one, which is more difficult. Uh, in order to prove Cauchy Schwarz inequality, we need a very simple lemma from high school if we have a second order polynomial okay which is which has constant sign so which means that it's either always positive uh, non-negative for all t or non-positive for all t then its discriminant is necessarily less or equal than zero the reason is very simple because if the discriminant was positive then f or the polynomial would have two distinct roots, two real roots, t1 and t2. And so we can factor it in this way, a t minus t1, t minus t2. But as you know, f would, would change sign in this case. It would be, between the roots would be positive or negative, depending on the sign of a. So it would be either plus minus plus or minus plus minus. So it would not be of constant sign. And this is a contradiction. Now we move to... Cauchy-Schwarz. Okay, if we have two n real numbers of any sign, then the sum of their products in absolute value is less than the sum of the square to the power one half of the first n times the same thing for the other n. Now, in this way, it need not be very. Uh, it's not very clear what do we mean by this, but there is a geometric interpretation that I would give after proving this algebraic inequality, which is a really fundamental inequality in all mathematics. Okay, so consider the polynomial in T, so if T is a real variable, consider the polynomial uh, Txk plus Yk squared, and we do the summation over all k. So you agree that this is a second order polynomial, and you ex if we expand the squares, we will get this expression, okay? So a plus b squared will give you this expression and just do a summation. And since f of t is non-negative, then this polynomial here is non-negative. So it has a constant sign for all t. So applying the lemma, the discriminant or the reduced discriminant, same thing, is less or equal than zero. And that's it. If we take the square roots, we get the result. So it's a very, very easy inequality. Now, what is the geometric interpretation? The geometric interpretation is that if we consider the first n numbers as an n tuple, as a point in Rn, and the, the, last, the last n numbers as another point or another vector in Rn, then the, there is the notion of a dot product or, or inner product that you are familiar with from high school. So the dot product of two vectors in Rn is the sum of the products of their components. Okay? And if we take x equal y in this case, we will get x dot x, which is the norm squared. Okay? So the sigma of xk squared to the power one half is just the norm of the vector x. And in this case, Cauchy's first inequality takes a very, very simple form. It means that the dot product in absolute value is less or equal than the product of the norms. And this is something that you already know it's, uh, from high school, at least for n equal two or three. But the algebraic, the proof is the same. Okay, so the dot product is always between minus the product of the norms and plus the product of the norms, okay? because the, the dot product can be negative, okay? <clears throat> So when we divide the dot product over the product of the norms, we get, we get something between minus 1 and 1. And we can use this to define the cosine of the angle between x and y, if you like. Okay, so this concludes uh, Cauchy-Schwarz. Now, a corollary of this is Minkowski. Uh, so, same thing, we have two n numbers. Now, 
okay, it's a little bit difficult to read if we don't interpret it geometrically, okay? But the geometric interpretation is that this is the norm of x. This is the norm of y, the Euclidean norm of y. And this is the Euclidean norm of x plus y. So, uh, <laughs> it, it's very, it's, uh, so this inequality is just the triangle inequality for the vectors x and y, okay? If I go back to the level of components, I can write it in this way, okay? Now, the proof is very easy. It's just a consequence of Cauchy-Schwarz. You can check directly by going back to the definition that the norm squared of x plus y, of course, we are talking here about the Euclidean norm, okay? Because we can define other norms on our end, but here we are just talking about the Euclidean norm, the usual norm. So the norm squared of x plus y is the norm square of x plus the norm square of y plus twice the dot product. Uh, it's it's just uh, an easy consequence. If you go back to the components, you will convince yourself that this is true. It's like a plus b squared. Now, we know that this dot product is less than norm x, norm y. So, by Cauchy-Schwarz, this term is less than norm squared plus twice product of norm plus y squared. And this is just the norm of x plus norm of y squared. And so taking the square roots, we get the result. Okay, so very, very easy, but uh, really fundamental, and you should know it. Okay, so this concludes this video and section 1.2. Next video will start with the topology of R, which is much more difficult than this. So thank you for your attention, and see you next time.